us up, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory. We give you honor, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. There's none like you, oh God. We glorify and magnify your name as we stand in your presence on this glorious day. Do a work like never before. Show up like never before. We invite you in this place and we receive you on this glorious day. For you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Worthy. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Is anybody thankful that he rose? Hallelujah. I'm so glad that he got up. Death could not hold him. The grave could not hold him. But we celebrate this morning because Jesus got up with all power in his hands. He got up with victory. And he got up for you and me. Come on, you ought to magnify him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, right here. Would you take this moment to stand on your feet? Clap those hands and celebrate a risen Savior. Come on. Let's create a sound of celebration in this place this morning with the clapping of your hands, the lifting of your voices. We celebrate a risen Savior this morning. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know it was the blood. It was the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. That washed us clean. The blood of Jesus that saved us. Hallelujah. Happy Resurrection Sunday, y'all. Hallelujah. I said happy resurrection Sunday. We're here to celebrate this morning. We're here to celebrate this morning. Hallelujah. He died on the cross just for me. Just for me. Sometimes I'm not deserving, but he still did it just for me. Hallelujah. Y'all gonna celebrate with us. Come on, clap your hands.
Lord, we just thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. Yes. We thank you for the blood. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. The blood still works, y'all. The blood still works. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He didn't have to do it, but he did. My God, he didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
cross just for you. You ought to give them glory this morning. Till my trophies and and love the lay down. I will cling. I will cling to the old, to the old, to the old and what it represents for me. And it changes. someday the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made for us the price that he paid on Calvary someday we'll be able to exchange that for a crown come on let's celebrate this morning hallelujah one more time I know you pressed your way to get out of your bed to brush your teeth to wash your face to put on your good clothes but again, will you stand to those feet this morning? I'll give you just a second. Will you rest to your feet if you're able this morning? Help me celebrate the risen King. His name is Jesus. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Everlasting Father. The government sits upon his shoulders. Come on, let's celebrate him. He is the I am that I am this morning. And we praise him because he rose. He got up for you and he got up for me. <laughs> when death should have been our portion, when, when I should have been the one hanging there on the cross, Jesus said, no, I'll take your place. I'll be the ransom. I'll be the sacrifice. There is nothing that I could ever do to pay the debt that I owe. But I'm so glad that Jesus decided to trade places with me. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's praise him this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Perhaps I can, I can ask a question this morning. Is there anybody happy that he rose? Okay, all right, all right. I just wanted to see if you, you were awake and alert. Is, is there anybody who's thankful that he rose? Because, I mean, I could, I could pump you and I could prime you and I could, I could try to stir you up and get you in the spirit of celebration, but is there anybody truly thankful this morning? 
Yes, 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 that's it, that's it, that's it. Amen, there's a grateful people in the house this morning. We understand that we come to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen, we are so happy that you chose to join us this morning. One more time, clap those hands for Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, we do have a program for you this morning. You may be seated in, in, in the interest of time. Amen. Our youth are going to come this morning, amen, and to present us with their gifts and with their talents, amen, and they are going to pretty much carry us through this service this morning. So I want you to receive them. First, we're going to ask our brother Jordan Bullock if he would come with invocation, and he's going to be followed by brother Zaire uh, with our scripture, amen. Let's receive them in that order. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'll be here for giving a short, powerful prayer for us, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ himself. Bow our heads for prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to not ask for anything, but to thank you. We thank you for waking us this morning. We thank you for loving us, keeping us, protecting us, covering us. And we thank you for all the good things you've done. We thank you for shedding your blood on that cross. We thank you for dying for us on that cross. And we thank you for rising for, all, for us and our satisfaction, and, our, and everything we do. We thank you for forgiving us for our sins, because who knows where we'll be at. We just thank you. We don't ask, we thank. All we do is ask, but we want to thank today. Because this is a day we celebrate you. And we thank you for all the great things you've done. We thank you for having us come from bad times to good times. From good times to bad times. And even when we're in bad times, you still help us. We thank you for that. We thank you for forgiveness. Because where will we be at without forgiveness? I'll tell you right now, we won't be in heaven. So we just thank you. And this is all I ask, this is all I thank you for. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone say amen. Good morning. I'll be reading from John 6, verses 35 to 40. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I was told, I would, but as I told you, you have seen me, and I still, you do not believe. All the Father gives me will, will come to me, and whoever comes to me will never drive away. For a wife, come down from heaven not to do my will but to do will of him who sent me and this will and this will of him who sent me that I shall lose none of all those he has given me but raise them up the last day for my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son of God believes in him says have an eternal life and I will raise them up to the last day Amen. 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 You may be seated. While you're going down, one more time, clap your hands for these young men of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Zaire. Powerful prayer in scripture this morning. We just say thank you again. Uh, once again, good morning, church. 
Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Resurrection Sunday. On behalf of Bishop Wayne Bullock and Lady Kendra Bullock, we would like to welcome you this morning to Guiding Star Church. Uh, to those of you who are watching us via YouTube or Facebook Live, we say happy Resurrection Sunday to you and welcome. Uh, if this is your first time, we hope and pray that you felt welcome from the moment that you walked through this door uh, to the moment that you saw the greeters in the cedars to the moment that you took your seat. We pray that you felt welcome, and we pray that this won't be your last time fellowshipping with us, but come back next Sunday and the Sunday after and the Sunday after. So once again, we hope and pray that you felt welcome. And to conclude this welcome this morning, we're going to have a short video message from Miss Hannah Payton and Mr. Justin Bullock. Amen. Clap it up again for Hannah and Justin. Amen. They were willing to participate, and we praise God for technology. Amen. There's a way to incorporate everybody. Um, at this time, we have three young people who are going to come and give us some uh, special tributes or speeches, if you will. I want you to receive at this time, and in this order, uh, first we're going to have Miss Madison Cadet, followed by Jaden Bullock, and then we're going to end off with Miss Khalees Coleman. Amen. Let's receive them in that order. resurrection we hold so close to our hearts the cross where Jesus Jesus died but so much more than the blessing cross is that Jesus came back to life the stones been rolled away the tomb laid open and bare they looked for him and the angel said that he is no longer there oh what joy they must have felt to receive him just to see him just once more to eat with him to drink with him to receive him back as Lord so much did he accomplish through his death upon the cross and in his rising from the dead he reconciled us back to God nothing else could bridge the gap that sin has wrecked apart now we can freely go to God and receive Christ in our hearts Amen. Just before Jaden comes, I'm going to ask if there are any Guiding Star men in the building who are currently occupying a seat. I'm going to ask, as, as you see uh, some of the visitors and some of, some of the women coming in, if you could give up your seat. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. There we go. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, one more thing. Someone lost a gray pocketbook outside this morning. If you are looking for that, the purse is here on the front seat. Just see me uh, so we can get that back to you. Jaden Bullock. Good morning, church. Good morning. So today I will be reading what resurrection means to me. One sin could have equaled eternal suffering, so God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to take our sins and die on the cross just for us, and resurrected on Easter Sunday. That means I could be forgiven for anything, like when I don't listen to my parents. Or... That's a sin. Or, or when I say bad words when my parents aren't around. But I always think it's best to tell the truth. That doesn't mean we can continue to sin and expect God to forgive us all the time. We don't have an infinite sin pass. We 
Jesus made himself look bad for us. He must really love us. Good morning, church. Today I'll be speaking about Resurrection Sunday. Christ died on the cross to save us from our sins, but death cannot defeat him. Hallelujah. For on the third day he rose again, so we too may have eternal life with him in heaven. Though Jesus was crucified, his love for us never died. The storm was rolled away, and Christ is risen today. Let us remember Jesus' sacrifice and rejoice in his victory over death. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, y'all help me give a big hand clap for Madison, Jaden, and Khalees. Come on, clap it up for them, clap it up for them. Wow, phenomenal job, phenomenal job. You stood with such confidence, such poise. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. One more time, clap it up for them. Yeah. Phenomenal job, phenomenal job. And we're moving right along in our service this morning. Is anybody excited about the Word of God? Yeah. Amen. I am excited about the Word of God. I believe that God is going to bless our bishop uh, to deliver a powerful sermon this morning. Amen. I want you to stretch forth your hand this way and say, God, give him strength. God, use him now. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I believe that God is going to use him mightily. And before our bishop comes to take the podium this morning, we're going to have a special dance tribute by our GS youth. I want you to receive them. And immediately after, I want you to stand to your feet and receive our bishop this morning as he comes. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands as they come. Oh, every part. 
Praise. Come on, a resurrection praise. Oh, that's it. Come on. Come on, a resurrection praise. I need a praise because you got up. I need anybody that got up from anything. Come on, give them an I got up praise. Come on, give them an I got up testimony. Give them an I got up hallelujah. Give them an I got up hallelujah. Just do me a quick favor. Just do me a quick favor. Just lean over and tell somebody next to you. Just tell them, say, Jesus. Come on, just shout that name. Say, Jesus. Tell the other person next to you, say, Jesus. There's no other name whereby men and women can be saved. You can go up to the highest mountain. You can become one with the trees. You could become one with the leaves. But the only power that can save you, there's only one name. There's only one name that can lift you out of a hell hole. There's only one name that can pull you out of Satan's grip. One name that can keep your mind in perfect peace. Anybody ever felt like you were about to go crazy? But one name, one name. There's power in the name of Jesus. 
and my Bible tells me that at the name of Jesus one day every knee every Muslim every Buddhist every atheist every Gnostic their knee is gonna bow their tongue is gonna confess you mark my word that Jesus that Jesus is Lord he says everything above the earth everything in the earth and everything under the earth shall declare that Jesus is Lord one more time just shout Jesus in the house Can we put our hands together for these young people today? I want the best hand for these children. Come on, let's give it up for our young people. We are, this is Resurrection Sunday, and what they did is symbolic because this is a resurrection of our youth ministry. Did y'all catch that? I said, this is a resurrection of our youth ministry. After the pandemic, Amen. Some people aged out and wiped some families out. Some people went back to the world. Some people relocated. Some people had family that died and so much happened. But this is symbolic today because this is a resurrection of our youth. The resurrection of our young people. And they are not just the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today. They're the church right now. Amen. I honor the Lord and I want to give a special recognition to the woman that made this all possible with our young people. Where's Miss Makimie No, Makimie, where are you? Where is she? I don't see her. Where's Makimie? She downstairs. Amen. We'll celebrate her later. But can everybody put your hands together? Amen. Come on. We celebrate Makimie. The long rehearsals and dancing and the speeches and putting things together, we certainly celebrate her. We put our most precious cargo in her hands and she did an absolutely amazing job. Amen. Oh, there she is. Makemia, come on up here real quick so everybody can see who you are. Come on, y'all, she come. Come on, y'all, give her a loud roar. Step up here so they can see you. We just want to say we thank you so much. I'm a st Where's that other microphone? I'm going to step back. I don't want to get you sick. They said I shouldn't even be here today. But I couldn't miss these kids. I want you just to at least greet us and say something to us real quick. I just ran up here, guys. I'm sorry. My voice is also sounding like, you know. Good morning, church. Bishop, I want to thank you for trusting the God in me, because I just got here. So you must know God. Amen, amen, amen. Because I show up like I don't give, you know, like I'm just nobody sometimes. And you must know God. Amen. So I thank you. Amen. Every parent that have gotten my crazy texts <laughs> and didn't yell at me, I thank you. I thank every child that got up here today and poured your heart out. <laughs> Elder Keith, come over here real quick. So if you know anything about women born in February, we have some crazy minds. Who just said that? <laughs> and Bishop, you partnered me up with the best yes. co-laborer. Oh, yeah. He's the real deal. He's the real deal. Because his mom and I have the same birthday. Mm. So every time I sent my crazy ideas to him, he understood. Because he was raised with me, <laughs> by me. <laughs> and I thank you. I want to tell all the youth, young kings and queens. Your church love you. Amen. Your bishop and first lady love you. Amen. You have to understand that you're royalty. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. 
And when you know who you belong to, you move different, you act different. Bishop, I'm sorry, I wasn't supposed to say all of this. Thank you. You move different, you act differently. You're royalty. You belong to the kings of all kings, the Lord of all lords. Everything you need, he has. So your bishop, your first lady, your church will all miss, miss bring room for you. Whatever you need is here. So wherever you go, just remember, God and start will guide you back here. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry. In my prayer time this morning, I don't know who this is for, but God said to the parents, I know you feel like sometimes you're losing yourself and your children. And you feel like no one is seeing you, no one sees you. Whatever if it's a single parent, mm, it's more than just one. But if it's a single parent or a husband and wife household, God sees you. And sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself. This is Holy Week. He sacrificed his son for us. You have to sacrifice yourself for your generations. So even when it hurts, Sorry, Bishop, I know it wasn't part of the program. Amen. Even when it hurts, you have to lay down your life for your son or your daughters. Yeah. Because sometimes it takes you to bear that cross for your generations. And is it worth it? Is it worth it? So you keep asking God for direction, and he will keep pouring back into you. And that's it. I thank you guys for trusting me with your kids. And my crazy mind gonna do some crazy things this year. So you stuck with me. You guys stuck with me. All right, I'm gonna get up. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you. Come on, let's give it up for uh, the King Lier. As you stand on your feet, as we go to the Word of God, as we go to the Word of God, I honor the most beautiful and lovely lady in the room. Amen. Today and every day, my wife, amen, Lady Kendra. Amen. Well, let's celebrate her. Come on, y'all better do better than that. I honor her, I celebrate her. Amen, and I'm glad to have somebody by my side. Amen. amen. I got up out the bed today because I didn't want to miss the children. And I've been in bed since Thursday with aches and chills. And, um, but I wanted to see the babies today and I wanted to just come and share what the Lord placed on our heart to give you. So I just want you to know after I finish preaching, amen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like Batman. Because I, I respect your health, I respect your security. I test if I'm not COVID, I test if I'm COVID, I'm COVID negative. Um, but I still respect your health and I don't want to get anybody sick. So I'm just going to make my way out, amen, right after we preach. John 20, the 20th chapter of the gospel according to St. John. This is a very lengthy passage of scripture, so I'm going to skip around. But I certainly pray that I can encourage somebody's heart today. I pray that by the time you leave here today, you say, man, I understand this thing a little bit better. The gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, beginning at verse 11. Thank you. And we're going to read from verse 11 through 13 that I'm going to skip down. 18 through 21, and then I'm going to read 24 through 28. I'm reading from the NIV version. Beginning at verse 11, it says, Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. Somebody say, had been. been. Y'all know what that means. That means it wasn't there. Had been. One at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? 
Going down to verse 18, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Going down to verse 24. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I'm committed that I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting. Stop doubting. Stop doubting. And believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. I just want to flip over really quick and read one verse from the gospel according to St. Mark chapter 16, verse 6. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. He is not here. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Today I want to talk to you for just a little while and I pray that you pray for me. That God will give me strength over this voice and over this breathing. But I want to talk to you today from the subject, the power of an empty tomb. Amen. Tell somebody, say, there's power in an empty tomb. Now, one more time, say, thank God for an empty tomb. Father, we thank you for this great occasion. We thank you for this great Resurrection Sunday. I thank you that you have decided to wake me up this morning to use me for just a little while. I pray, God, that you be my strength, that you be my joy, that you be my clarity, that you be my understanding. Heavenly Father, as we attempt to declare this your word today, I pray, God, that you would use me for your glory. Speak, use me as an oracle. I pray that a life will be changed today by the preaching. I pray that somebody's heart will be provoked to change, to think differently. I pray that for the next few minutes that all hearts and minds will be focused on one thing, and that's your word. Take out all distractions in the room, cell phone distractions, candy distractions, noise distractions, and I pray that your people can focus for just a little while as we declare your word. Use me for your glory. I give you all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. In this crowded church, you may be seated. Amen. It's tight up in here. Like sardines up in here. And I like sardines, too. Put, put that on some wheat bread toasted. Yeah. <laughs> who, who likes sardines? There we go. Resurrection Sunday is the most sacred and powerful day in Christianity. As believers in Christ, it is the day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
A large part of Resurrection Sunday is based on the experiences that happened on the cross. We think about the crown of thorn that was placed on his head. Jesus was stripped of his clothes and led to the hill of Golgotha. Do y'all remember the story how stakes were driven in his wrists? Stakes were driven in his ankles, fastening him to the cross. And not only was he up there by himself, somebody had the nerve to nail him between two thieves. Two convicted criminals. He was pierced in his side. When we think about this day, we memorialize the seven last sayings. Y'all know them, Father, forgive them, for they know not. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I thirst, it is finished. And Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. But the power of the cross is only half of the Easter story. The power of the cross is only half the story. The other half of the story is the power of the empty tomb. Yes, Jesus shed his blood and gave up his breath and died on the cross. But I want you to know today that if Jesus did not rise from the grave, we all would still be dead in trespasses and sins. He could have stayed on that cross all night long. He could have stayed there. He could have died there. But except he got up from the grave, you still would be lost in your mess. Jesus' death on the cross demonstrated him taking our sins and dying a sinner's death. But getting up from the grave demonstrated the power to overcome sin and death and live again. I want you to know today that the fact that you did all the nasty stuff you did. The fact that you were sinful and you were treacherous. The fact that you, anybody did some nasty things. Don't wave your hand. I don't, but I, I know you did. We did all this nasty stuff, but we still get to live a life in Christ is simply because of the fact that Jesus rose again from the dead. My Bible tells me in Romans 4 that rising, he justified me. We were justified because he got up from the grave. Bishop, what does justified mean? It means just as if I'd never done it. I'm justified because even though I did it, I didn't do it in God's eyes. Tell your neighbor, say, I did it, but I didn't do it. They're not going to understand that. Tell them, I say, I did it, but I didn't do it. This is why Paul said, I want to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. That's, that's the cross. He says, but so that I can know you in the power of your resurrection. That's the empty tomb. Paul understood that the suffering in the death was only half the story, but the empty tomb was the power of the resurrection. I don't know how you feel about it, but I thank God this morning for an empty tomb because the empty empty tomb says that Jesus is no longer there we live in a day now where everybody wear jewelry and they got Jesus hanging on the cross I don't wear chains with Jesus on the cross because guess what Jesus is not there uh, uh, to, to just have a chain with him on the cross speaks to the suffering but it doesn't speak to the resurrection the power is not in him dying the power is that three days oh I feel the holy I hope I got a church today three days later he got up from the grave with all power in his hand Get Give your neighbor the first nudge and say, he got up for me. In our text today, Mary is at the tomb. She is the first one there to experience the resurrection. You got a lot of people today that don't believe women should be preachers. But guess what? A woman was the first one that noticed that there was a resurrection. You want to send all the men out to preach the word, but a woman found the word first. A woman found that Jesus got up from the grave. Mary stood outside the tomb, but she didn't go in, but instead she ran to tell Simon and Peter, Simon, Peter, and John what she saw. The Bible says Peter and John came running into the tomb. They looked inside and saw that Jesus was not there. They were so upset that they took off and went back home, but the woman stayed at the grave. 
The Bible says she stayed at the tomb and she wept and she wept and she looked down in the tomb and saw that Jesus was not there. What I need you to realize is that this was already a bad day for Mary. 48 hours ago, she has seen her Lord and Savior die on the cross. She saw his body laid in the tomb. She saw the stone rolled in front of it. And now she's here to pay her final respects, but the dead body is gone. She's standing in an empty tomb. What do you do when what was supposed to be there ain't there no more? Lord have mercy. She is crushed. She is depressed. She is defeated. She is hopeless. I think we could uh, somewhat imagine how Mary felt because I think we all in here sometime in our lives felt the emptiness all around us. Anybody in here understand emptiness in your life? Does anybody ever been there where everybody's around but you still feel lonely? You can touch all the things but you still feel empty inside. But the problem was the tomb wasn't supposed to be empty. After the Sabbath had ended, and I know we, we Sunday is our Sabbath, but in biblical times, the Sabbath is actually Saturday. Amen. So Friday he died. Saturday was the Sabbath. And now here comes Sunday, early in the morning. She went to the tomb expecting the body to be where she left it on Friday. But when she got there, the body was gone. The empty tomb is the first and most fundamental sign of Easter. The absence of Jesus' body, that's the first indication of the resurrection because Jesus wasn't where they left him. I don't know about you, but this is why I love Resurrection Sunday because it reminds me that I am not where people left me. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing today. People left me depressed and they left me weary. The last Last time they saw me I was sick and the last time they saw me I was in sin but resurrection says I'm not where you left me you left me there but look at me now give your neighbor a quick nudge and say I'm not where they left me you left me a drug addict when you, when you saw me last I was a heroin addict when you saw me last I was drinking at nine o'clock in the morning when you saw me last I was a liar and I was a cheater but resurrection says I am not where they left me I'm better than that I moved on from that somebody shout the empty tomb people remember what you used to be but tell somebody say I ain't there no more Come on, say, I ain't there no more. Come on, say, I ain't that woman no more. I ain't that man no more. I know what I used to be, but I ain't that no more. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. All things become new. I am not what I used to be. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I smoked that. Yeah, I drunk that. Yeah, I put it in there. Yeah, I took it out of that. Yeah, I laid with that. But I am not what I used to be. God is in my life. And today, I got resurrection power. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody shout resurrection power. You got to stop letting, holding pe letting people hold you to your yesterday. There are some people that never want you to move forward. So every time they see you in a new light, they hold you back to 2018. Don't hold me back to 2016 and 2014 because I've been resurrected since then. I know what I did back in 11. I know what I did back in 09, but I'm a different man today. I'm a different woman today. Somebody throw your hand up, say I'm different now. You know what I realized? When people can't deal with the new you, they'll relegate you to the old you. See, you dealt with me better when I was who you wanted me to be. You dealt with me better when I was weak. You dealt with me better when I needed your advice for everything. You dealt with me better when I couldn't find my way out. But now that I got my way out, but now that I'm delivered, but now that I ain't sick no more, now that I ain't down no more, now you'd rather kill me than deal with me. Ah, oh, but somebody throw your hand up and say the empty tomb. I'm a product of the empty tomb. I'm going to pay for this later, but I'm going to keep preaching. The empty tomb is all 
about something missing. Did y'all know that resurrection is all about something missing? The beautiful thing about this early Sunday morning is that not just one thing was missing, but two things were missing. Not only was Jesus' body missing, but death was missing. Lord have mercy. Resurrection is about two things that were supposed to be somewhere weren't there anymore. Jesus was supposed to be there, but he was gone. And because Jesus was gone, death was gone. And because death was gone, fear was gone. And loneliness was gone. And despair was gone. And grief was gone. Anybody glad that death went missing on that great day? I got up and I'm going to live without death. Although this was a beautiful moment in history, Mary, like many of us, don't understand the power of the empty tomb. So guess what she did? She laid there and weeped and cried and weeped and cried. I'm talking to, can I come down your street for a few minutes? Some of y'all weeping and crying because of emptiness. You don't know that the best thing ever was you getting cheated on. That was the best thing that could have happened to you. You don't realize that them moving far away was the best and blessed thing that could have happened to you. Come on, somebody. Uh, tell your neighbor, say, you better understand emptiness. Sometimes emptiness is a good thing. But when you don't understand the power of emptiness, you just cry. God, why did they leave? Why? 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 Because they was killing you. It was keeping you from living right. God, why'd you take them away? They took them away because you were strong until you got in their presence. Then you got weak and you fell for the alley-oop and the okey-doke. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you looked around and everything seemed hopeless and everything seemed in despair and nothing in your life was where it was supposed to be? And the Bible says Mary was crying and crying. But here's what I love in verse 12. The angels, one was sitting at the foot of where Jesus was. One was sitting at the head. And they looked at Mary and they said to her, woman, why are you crying? Can I ask y'all a question for you that feel empty? Why are you crying? For you that feel like nothing in your life is working, why are you crying? For you that are trying but feel like things aren't getting better, why are you crying? How dare the angels tell this woman whom Jesus loved, this woman who was prepared to anoint his body with spices, how dare they tell this woman that has seven spirits and demonic whores and prostitutional spirits that Jesus cast out of her, how dare they tell her the man that she loved and cannot find, how dare they tell her, stop crying. But they had a reason. Anytime God tells you to stop crying, I guarantee you he got a reason. <laughs> Can I help somebody? Anytime God says wipe your tears, he's got a reason. Can I talk to you, sister, brother? I know you're crying. Anytime you're crying and the Lord says, my child, wipe your tears, you better know that he's got a reason. The Bible says, he that's sowing tears shall reap in joy. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Anytime the Lord says, stop crying, you better know that there's a reason. Tell your neighbor, say, he's got a reason. He's got a reason. And here's the reason. Here's the reason. Mark 16, verse 6. The angel said to the woman, look at this. The angel says, he is not here. He is risen. It says, see the place where they laid him. See the place where they, you with me now, evangelist? Okay, now? Now? You with me now? Okay. See the place where they laid him. Watch this. By the angel saying, look at the place where they laid him. Don't miss this. 
They weren't directing Mary to look in a different place. They were all in the same tomb looking at the same grave at the same time. But they still said, Mary, look at the place where they laid him. But they said, Mary, look at the place where they laid him, not to direct her to look at a different place. They were telling her to look at the same place she was already looking at, but look at it a different way. Lord have mercy. Oh, I wish I could encourage somebody today. I dare you to look at what you're looking at, but look at it in a different way. I ain't telling you to close your eyes. Look at that sickness, but look at it in a different way. Look at that unemployment, but look at it in a different way. Look at that defeat, but look at it in a different way. Give your neighbor the first high five. Say, don't stop looking, but look at it differently. Y'all like forgot how to high five. Come on, tell them, say, look at it in a different way. You got to learn to see your pain, but see it in a different way. You got to see the hurt, but look at it in a different way. Because resurrection changes everything. That's what I love about the resurrection. I can look at something one way, but I can see it in another way. And that's the power of resurrection. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, look at it in a different way. Mary had a bad Friday because Jesus died. She had a bad Saturday because she spent all day thinking about the death of the Lord. And now she's having a worse Sunday because his body is gone. But if she understood the power of the empty tomb, Mary would have celebrated because she would have realized that when death is no longer present, that means I'm alive and well. Can I help somebody today? God is trying to pull you out the grave and let you know that you got resurrection power. See the place where they laid him. I know what the doctor said, but I got resurrection power. I know what the bank said, but I got resurrection power. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, say I got resurrection power. They said, Mary, see the place where they laid him. I know somebody in here is frustrated, but I need you to see the power of the empty tomb. The power of the empty tomb says that I don't have to lay in my mess, but I can get up and be what God has called me to be. I need somebody to help me preach a moment. Uh, the power to get up says I'm not where they left me. I'm doing something greater because God has pulled me out I need somebody in here that know what it's like to live in a dirty sinful life but look at God he pulled you out with a mighty hand tell your neighbor say neighbor say he pulled me out with a mighty hand if you're feeling down see where they laid him if you're feeling defeated See where they laid him. Don't look away, but just look differently. Somebody say yes. Give me, give me seven minutes. I want to show you the power of the empty tomb. In John 20, verse 19 and 20, it says that when Mary came to the disciples, all these grown men was locked in a room, scared. I got a problem when grown men just sitting around scared. That bothers me. Just a bunch of grown men just sitting scared. We got to be on guard, fellas. What kind of woman going to want to be with us and we scared? Ain't no woman want no scary man. You scared. You pushing her out front. Go and look and see what that is. What's wrong with you? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't want no woman that's always going to get me in no trouble. Every time we go out, I got to, you, you, you're going to argue with everybody. Now, I got to get in stuff. I'm going to tell you something about women. The Bible says for women, it says, quietness shall be your ornament. I better move on from that because that gets you in trouble. 
The Bible says you should adorn yourself with modesty and quietness. Did I mess y'all up? Y'all still love me? Boy, y'all got to see some of y'all faces. You're like, mm. Y'all like, mm, yeah. Yeah, but the Bible says modesty shall be your ornament. Like an ornament on a tree, that should, that should identify you, your modesty and your quietness. A lot of the men don't want to say preach. Go ahead, they don't want to say nothing. Say preach. I'm in the word. And the Bible says the women are the weaker vessel. It doesn't mean they're weaker emotionally. It doesn't mean they're weaker as a person. But it means we as men got to handle them with more care. Somebody say preach. But now these grown men sitting around scared. They followed Jesus for three and a half years. And now Jesus is gone. His enemies became their enemies. His haters became his, their haters. His hunters became their hunters. But now the man that they were following is gone. Jesus is crucified. They saw him take his last breath and die and fear paralyzed them. The most incredible thing in human history happened, but their fear allowed them to miss a move of God. Sometimes fear will paralyze you so much that it'll cause you to miss what God is doing in your life. Do I have a witness here? Sometimes you're afraid. You're laying in the bed, afraid. Get up out the bed. Stop being afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Sometimes fear can make us miss opportunities. I don't know who this word is for, but somebody right now, you need to get up, step out on faith, and start the business God told you to start. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, stop being scared. Stop being scared. You got to get up and, 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 and take a leap of faith. Fear going to have you miss a move of God. But don't get up, don't start. Don't start the business until you know what you're doing. Because there's a such thing as silly faith or stupid faith. You ain't learned. You ain't disciplined yourself. You don't understand the trade. Just because you make potato salad don't mean you're going to run a good potato salad business. All right, I better move on from that. Because if you don't understand profit margins and, and debt to ratio capital and working, if you don't understand capital and you don't understand overhead and you don't understand profit and loss, then, then you can make all the potato salad you want. Come on, somebody. What's, what's paralyzing you? What's, what's, what's making you afraid to believe God? Why are you afraid to trust him? Is your job situation paralyzing you? Threat of your... Listen, I'm a, listen, don't sit around and be so scared because you think all power is in your boss's hands. Guess what? All power is not in your boss's hands. My Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Some of y'all living in fear. You're afraid to step out. You're afraid. Your boss got power, but they ain't got all the power. I don't care if they're laying everybody off. I don't care if they're doing budget cuts. God will make them go in the back and make a position for you. But the resurrected power, and I'm coming to a close. I got to rest now. But the resurrected Jesus offered something in the place of their fear. Jesus walked right in the room past the locked doors. And the first thing he said, he said, peace be with you. Look at your neighbor and say, peace be with you. Now, come on, do it like you tell, your neighbor needs to hear. Tell him, say, peace be with you. Anybody need peace today? Anybody need peace? Yes. All right, I'm about to mess you up with this. Guess what? Peace ain't just your problem stopping. Peace is in spite of your storm. 
in spite of the roaring rumbling, in spite of the pain, in spite of the circumstance, I still have peace. That's what resurrection is all about. It's about peace in the middle of a storm. I shall not live in fear because I've got peace. There is no fear in love for perfect love casteth out fear. I've got peace today. Somebody shout, say, I got peace. I'm closing, I'm closing. I got one more point, I'm closing. But the devil wants to steal your, he wants to steal your peace. You don't have to live in fear because I got peace. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes, you know what you got to do? You got to muster up enough courage to believe in yourself to say, you know what? From this day forward, I declare I'm going to have peace. Can I get about 20 witnesses real quick to say from this day forward, I'm going to have peace. Because you get to a place in your life where all you want is your peace. You can fool with a lot of things and a lot of people for a long time, but you reach an age and a station and a place in your life where peace costs more than anything else. I pay for my peace. So you wonder why people are running off and, and going all these different places and finding all these new people and, and, and you see women and men how, how they leave me for them, they ugly, they fat it ain't that, it's peace they ain't got nothing on me no they don't, but, they, but I got peace oh come on y'all don't come on now, people want peace He's, well, I take an ugly dude but he gonna give me peace I got to keep them looking fly because that's, that's all I can do for them. The face ain't working, but I got peace. Come on, somebody. Am I talking right? Come on, peace. I'd rather have my peace. You can take the, you can take the waist. You can take the side, the 34, 24, 26. Put it on. I need peace. But you know what I'm learning more and more? Jesus can only give us that peace. Come on, Jesus can only give us that peace. The last point as I close, the empty tomb turned doubt into faith. Somebody say doubt. Come on, into faith. I've always felt bad for doubting Thomas. He had a bad reputation. And he had a bad reputation. Everybody watch this. Doubting Thomas, we call him Doubting Thomas today for one bad moment in his life. Everybody can't understand Doubting Thomas. The only people here that can understand Doubting Thomas is for those of you that have been judged by one moment in your life. Woo. People to judge you on one bad moment. I could have had a hundred good moments, but one bad moment and people will define you and relegate you to that moment for the rest of your life. Anybody know what it's like to only be remembered for your worst moments? Oh, y'all gonna leave? Anybody, anybody know what it's like to be remembered only for your worst moment? But Jesus did not belittle Thomas. Jesus did not berate Thomas for doubting the resurrection. Instead, Jesus with his loving arms, he reached out to Thomas and said, look, I know they're laughing at you. I know they're criticizing you, but I'm not here to criticize. He says, look at the scars in my hand. Look at the piercing in my side. Thomas, I love you so much that if you need to see it, I'll show it. Come on, let's, let's be real, God. Sometimes you can believe God without no questions asked. He can say it, and you can believe it, and you can run with it. But then there are times when the Lord speaks, but you need some evidence. Oh, come on, y'all going to leave me by myself. Anybody say, Lord, I need to see it. Lord, I need a tactile approach. I need a kinesthetic approach. I need to touch what you said. Anybody ever been there before? But Jesus said, I love you so much that whatever it takes for you to believe. 
He said, I'll do it. Although Jesus appears in physical body to Thomas and urges Thomas to touch his side, Jesus said, Thomas, look at the scars in my hand. He said, Thomas, look at the piercing in my side. But let me tell you what's so beautiful about it. If you really read your scripture, you'll find that Thomas never touched him. Hallelujah. Thomas never touched his hand. He never touched his side. Just the fact that Jesus was willing to show him the scars was enough for Thomas to quote the most unforgettable words. He said, my Lord and my God. Somebody wave your hand. Say thank you, Jesus, for loving me enough to let me touch you. I feel the Holy Ghost now. The power of the empty tomb turns doubt into faith. The power of the empty tomb turns grief into grace jump on your feet quickly the power of the empty tomb turns despair into confidence somebody say yes shake your neighbor by the hand say neighbor say the power of the empty tomb made a way for me to get up come on tell your neighbor say get up from your pain get up from your sin come on say get up tell your other neighbor say this is resurrection Sunday say get up from the grave hallelujah come on say get up I'm closing my message but Jesus laid in the tomb on Friday night hell got happy demons dance the Sadducees were satisfied Saturday rolled he was still in the grave come on help me preach he was still there Saturday but what you need to know is that even in the grave he was still preaching the Bible says he went back to the antediluvian period back in Noah's day and he preached to the souls that lost in the flood hallelujah but early one Sunday I feel the preacher now early one Sunday I can see Jesus turning in his room key to hell's receptionist I can hear hell say checking out so soon and Jesus says oh baby you got it wrong it was only a weekend stay I ain't here forever I checked in on Friday but early Sunday morning shout back to me say early Sunday morning come on y'all say early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand cause he got up I'm getting up because he lives I live because he overcame then I overcame throw both hands up say it was only a weekend stay my promises are yay and amen I've been hurt but I'm getting up from this I've been violated but I'm getting up from this y'all done talked about me but I'm getting up from this my daddy was a deadbeat but I'm getting up from this my mama was a whore but I'm getting up from this my life was in shambles but I'm getting up from this I got cancer in my body but I'm getting up from this my kidneys are failing but I'm getting up from this somebody say get up say get up up from the grave he rose with all power somebody wave your blessed hand say with all power in his hand say yes say yes I'm closing my message but the Bible says that when they came in to the empty tomb they saw his garments laid everywhere they were scattered around but the linen that was on his head the Bible says it was folded neatly and laid in the place where his head was many theologians don't understand why in the world would Jesus get up from the grave take his napkin 
fold it in a place and lay it there. Well, it goes back to Hebrew servant times when the master was sitting at the table. When he would eat his food, the servants could not eat until the master was done. When the master was done, then the servants could eat. So when the master would take his napkin, hallelujah, and throw it on the table, it was a sign that I'm finished and I don't want no more. But when the master folds the napkin and lays it there, he says, I'm going away, but one day I will be back. Can I preach like I feel it? Jesus is coming back one day and it won't be long. He's coming back. You better get your house in order today. If you're a liar, you better make it right. If you're a cheater, you better make it right. If you're a gossiper, you better shut your mouth because Jesus is on his way. And the Bible says he's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. How easy is it to get a spot? How easy is it to get a wrinkle? But Jesus says, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for purity. I want your heart pure. For the last time, tell your neighbor, say Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. The day or the hour, no man knows. But Jesus is coming back. It might be in the morning. It might be at lunchtime. But the sky shall darken. And the moon shall drip blood. And the earth shall shatter. And Jesus shall ascend on a cloud. And every eye shall see him say yes and he's coming back for a resurrected church throw your hands up for the last time say thank God for the empty tomb now give God your best praise come on come on give him your best praise Come on, young people. Come on, older people. Give them your best praise. Thank God for the empty tomb. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. And life is worth living just because he lives. He lives. He lives. He lives. lives. Somebody said, how do you know he lives if you can't see him? I said, you believe in oxygen, don't you? You believe in air. You believe in O2. You can't see that. But I believe it. He lives. I'm, I'm saying this and I'm going to close. I'm excited because I'm not where people left me. I'm not where people remember me. Even to this day, people come, stop by the church, hit me up, and just say, I just want to see, is that really you up there preaching, or is that some clone up there preaching? You know what they say? Because I remember you. Ain't that what people do? Because I remember you. Young people, it don't matter what you are or what you've done. He can make all things new. He can make all things new. And I'm not ever going to let anybody subject me to what I used to be. Because I'm new. 
Don't hide your past. You tuck it under. You don't want nobody to see your past. You just want to put your nice clothes on and be shiny. Don't hide your past. Because people need your testimony. And there's no testimony without a test. I ain't hiding my past. It is what it is. Don't hide it for nobody. And guess what? If my past ain't good enough for you, it's a part of me. So if my past don't work for you, then I don't work for you. You don't get to just have half of me. You're going to take all of me. Amen. So when you're out there looking for somebody to marry, somebody to be with, it ain't about, oh, I need to see who ain't got baggage. No, you need to find somebody luggage that match yours. I just, we just both, we both got some bags. We just look up a matching luggage. Because everybody's got a past. And if there's someone today that's living in your past and you haven't come out of your past, you haven't come out of your past failures and your past regrets, I want you to know today, I want to extend Jesus to you. I want you to know that Jesus is here right now to heal your broken heart, to bless your soul. If there's anyone today on this Resurrection Sunday that said, you know what, Bishop? I really want to give the, the Lord my heart for real. I've said it before. I've played with it before. But I really want to give the Lord my heart. There's somebody that said, you know what? I once was there. And I, I left God. I went, I went back to the world. But I really want to come back today. Everybody close your eyes. If that's you, I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be scared. I don't want you to be ashamed. I want you to lift your hand. If you say, that's me, I'm ready. I'm ready to be saved today. I'm ready to give my heart back to the Lord. I see a hand up. Is there a hand? Come on. On this Resurrection Sunday, I'm tired of living in the past. Come on, say you, you, you. I see another hand. I see a young man. I got you. Come on, y'all. If there's another. I'm not going to embarrass you. All the hands that I saw up. We're going to repeat this prayer together. Listen, we had a few hands lifted up. I'm not even going to ask them to come right where they are. Just lift your hands up. And you can lift it too. You can lift it up too. And I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, here I am. Just as I am. I need you. Right now. To touch me. I desire. To be saved. I desire to know you as my savior father forgive me for all my wrong for all my sins all my bad decisions all my failures and I'm asking you God to help me receive me unto yourself I believe that you died for me and more than that 
you rose for me. I believe in the empty tomb, for that is my power and my resurrection. I believe that I'm saved. I am saved by your blood. I accept you into my heart from this day forward and forever in Jesus name in Jesus name now I know I'm gonna get the best praise out of y'all right now come on I know I'm gonna get the best praise come on oh that's it come on come on that's it God bless you God bless you come on y'all come on the Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice over one more than the 99 that didn't go nowhere come on there's one come on rejoice rejoice come on this is resurrection Sunday rejoice rejoice come on rejoice rejoice Come on, I'm going to get out of here, but rejoice. Rejoice. Praise him. Woo. I know it was the blood. And it was that empty tomb for me. That empty tomb says that I can get up. I'm done today. I'm closing. But look, I want to admonish you. Get up. Look at me. Look at me right in my eyes. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. How long you going to wallow? How long you going to wallow in self-pity? Get up. Get up. Get up and live again. Get up and live again. God bless you today. God bless you. Come on, will you, will you clap those hands again? Hallelujah. We praise God for that powerful word coming from our bishop. The power of an empty tomb. Amen. Come on, one more time. Will you celebrate the power of an empty tomb? Because Jesus got up. That is the proof that we can too get up again. Amen. We praise God for our bishop. We praise God for God giving him the strength uh, to deliver that powerful message this morning. Amen. Amen. We praise God for him. Listen, once again, someone misplaced uh, a purse this morning. Uh, it is a gray, looks like a Telfar, right? Yeah, a gray Telfar bag. If that is yours, uh, please see Lady K. She has your purse. Um, amen, amen, amen. Uh, please see her so you can reclaim your purse. Amen. We thank God again for the word. We thank God for giving our bishop the strength to deliver that powerful message this morning. Amen. Amen. We were praying that God would bring him through, and sure enough, God brought him through this morning. We pray that you were blessed by the word. Amen. We are going to convene the service very shortly, but before we do, we want to give you an opportunity to give this morning. We want to give you an opportunity to give. We do not put a dollar amount on what... Uh, uh, what you give, but we want you to give your very best. We want you to give from your heart this morning. Amen. For those of us who are more modern and into technology, we do have ways to give that do not involve cash. Um, you can give by cash app this morning, dollar sign 1223GS, or you can give by text to give 908-280-4957, or you can give by Venmo at guiding star and for those of you who prefer the traditional method of giving if you'd like to give by cash or check you can wave your hands and one of the ushers will see you with an envelope amen Shamika's got her mic ready I think she's gonna give us some giving music this morning amen
save humanity. You are the living word. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Come on, if you know it, can you sing with us? Born but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living word. Oh. the living word one more time clap your hands for Jesus in this place we thank you all for your liberal giving this morning all hearts and minds are clear is everyone satisfied with their giving this morning amen I want you to rest to your feet we won't hold you any longer but once again we want to thank you for coming uh, to celebrate this resurrection Sunday with us I want to again petition you to just continue to keep our bishop in prayer amen we know that we serve Jehovah Rapha the God who heals and we pray that God would release a speedy recovery and a speedy healing to him this morning before we dismiss uh, we do have Easter baskets downstairs for the children. I want to uh, reiterate, they are for the children. Uh, we have Easter baskets downstairs for the children. I do ask that um, if you have a child who is here and present, please take an Easter basket for them. If there are any remaining and you would like to take one for someone who is not here, uh, then you can do so. But please make sure the children who are here and present get an Easter basket first, amen? And there will be someone downstairs to help you and guide you. Again, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for celebrating this Resurrection Sunday. Sunday with us. Father, we thank you for all that has been said and done. We pray that you would protect us and give us road mercies as we leave this place. Cover us and go with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go in Jesus' name.